will show you how to use MLA citations in your next college essay. Before we begin though, I want you to remember way back, probably second or third grade, when you were in a class and your teacher was teaching you how to send a letter. When you were young, you learned the proper conventions for addressing your letter. For example, you learned where to put your return address, you learned where to put the sender's address, you even learned where to put the stamp. And you'll notice that everybody follows these same rules for sending a letter to our friends and family. The reason why this works is because everybody agrees upon and uses the same conventions in order to stay organized. All these conventions help make it a lot easier for us to get our mail. And I think MLA works the same way. We use a set of conventions or rules to organize and show our research trail in a way that's universal so that anybody who looks at our college essay can figure out where your information came from. So why do we use citations? We use citations to show our intellectual trail. You've spent a lot of time studying your topic in order to write about it in your college class. So one of the most important reasons to use MLA citations is to show what you've done to learn about your topic. You're also doing it to give credit to the authors who created, shared, and published their ideas in writing or in a video or a lecture. Any information that you've gathered from a source that's not yourself is information that you want to give credit to in your essay. Finally, using MLA citations also adds credibility to your own writing. Again, it shows your reader what you have done, all the hard work you've done to learn about this topic that you're now writing upon. So what is MLA? Well, MLA is basically an acronym for Modern Language Association. And this is one citation style that's used in English and literature courses. There are other citation styles that you may have heard of, like APA or Chicago style. So there are many different types of citation styles. The one you guys are learning about today is MLA. So citations, no matter what kind of style, APA or Chicago or MLA, citations are what we use to let our readers know where we learn the facts or ideas or concepts that we're developing in our own writing. So there's two ways you see MLA citations in your paper. First, you see them as in-text citations, and they appear at the end of sentences in which a writer like yourself directly quotes or summarizes or paraphrases information that you've learned from reading an article or a book or a journal or from any, any source that you've used. Anytime you're using information that you've learned from a source that's not yourself, you're going to be putting an in-text citation at the end of that sentence. So these citations that are inside your essay, they have a big job because they point your readers to the Works Cited page where your readers will go and they'll see the full citation and then they'll be able to find the source on their own. So using your citation, they'll be able to find the article, the book, the movie, blog, YouTube, or any other source you used in your paper by looking at your in-text citations and looking at your Works Cited page. So let's see what they look like. Um, MLA also includes more than just in-text citations. It's actually, um, the MLA citations dictate what your page will look like as well. So for example, you'll have an MLA heading that you see up there in Brandon's paper. You'll also notice that he has a heading at the top of his paper that has a page number. You'll also notice that his essay is double-spaced and uses a 12, 11 or 12 point uh, times Roman or Calibri font. And you'll notice that the title of his essay which is right here, is right at the very top of his paper, right above his introduction. All of those are conventions that are dictated by MLA format. What I really want you to zoom in on, though, is looking at the in-text citations. And you'll notice that some of the in-text citations have page numbers, like this one here. It says Kuntz 147. This one has page numbers, but then this one down here, Buchanan, does not have a page number. Down here, Monroe and Monroe has a page number. Okay, so all of these are using the author's last name and the page number where Brandon, the writer of this essay, learned this information. And you'll notice he's not using quotation marks here. That's because he's paraphrasing information that he learned from Kuntz's article, and that information is found on page 147. Okay, this is another paraphrase in Brandon's paper, and he's citing a source with the last name Buchanan. When you do not see a page number, that's most likely because it's either a website or an online source. And then down here, you can tell this was a book or an article because it has a page number and then the two authors. 
Okay, so when you're creating your in-text citations, you'll be using the author's last name and if a page number is available, the page number. If there is no author, then you would use the title of the article or the chapter that you're using. But this is what an in-text citation look like throughout your paper. After you've written your paper and you've created your in-text citations, it's now time for you to create a Works Cited page. This is the last page of your essay, and nothing else should be on your Works Cited page. It should be a page all by itself. So let me show you what Brandon's looks like. So these are the conventions for creating a Works Cited page. Your Works Cited page should have the words Works Cited centered at the top. It should be double-spaced, and it uses a hanging indent. And if you look up here on the page, the hanging indent occurs when the second or third or fourth line of the citation is indented. And you'll notice that this, the top line, goes all the way back to the margin. So that's called a hanging indent, and you can create them in using Word if you go into the paragraph formatting tool. You'll also notice that these are organized by the author's last name, and they're alphabetical. So they go through. If there is no author, then you would use the name of the article. Okay, so when you're creating your Works Cited page, it's either the author's last name. If there's no author available, then you would use the title of the article. So you can see on Brandon's page, he has a couple of those situations. This one is an article, and this one is an article that doesn't have an author. Okay, so overall, this, is, this workshop was showing you what MLA citations look like inside a paper and what they look like on a Works Cited page. So these are my final thoughts on learning how to write with MLA. Just like you did when you were learning how to write letters when you were a child in school, you have to be patient. So that's the first thing you want to be thinking about when you're using MLA. The second thing is you want to know what kind of source you have, and that will make creating a Works Cited page a lot easier. For example, you want to know if you got your source from an online article, or from a website, or from a blog, or a film, because all of these different types of sources have slightly different conventions to use when you're creating your Works Cited page. Once you know what kind of source you have, then I would recommend you go to the MLA.org website, and you'll be able to see what you need to do for the different types of sources that you have on your Works Cited page. Or you can use Noodle Tools at Northern Essex Community College, which is free for all of you when you go onto the library database, I mean the library homepage. I hope this overview has helped you better understand what MLA is and what it looks like inside your paper and on your Works Cited page. Bye!